Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse DePlantis here. I hope you're enjoying our YouTube videos. That's why you don't want to miss anything. So like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you will know when new content has been posted. That's like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So right now, watch this and be blessed. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jesse Duplantis. And I'm Kathy Duplantis, and we're here again for another beautiful chat. Hallelujah. What a blessing of God. And I want to talk about a chat on something you said. Okay. First, I'm, uh, the title of this whole boardroom chat, Who's Your Daddy? Oh. I said, Who's Your Daddy? I said that. Who's Your Daddy? Wait, I'm going to get there in a minute. You know, a lot of people don't know who their daddy is, you see. And when you don't know who your daddy is, then you don't know your inheritance. That's true. That's see, because you don't understand what's coming to you. Mm -hmm. I want to go to the book of Genesis, chapter 12, and I want to read verse 1, if it's okay with you, Kathy, yeah. in the King James. Okay. And here the Lord is commissioning Abram, who is going to be changed to Abraham. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred from Beginning thy father's house. In verse 1. Unto a land that I will show thee. Okay. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I want you to focus on the word blessing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. I want to focus on the word bless because if you don't know who your daddy is, you don't know where the blessing is. <laughs> and this is the statement you said. Okay. And if you can remember it, you said, I have moved from Stress Street to Bless Boulevard. <laughs> yes. Now explain that statement. Well, uh, the blessing changes my perspective. Right. Even though things may, uh, you know, no matter what things look like in the natural, I know I don't, I'm not subject to the natural. I have the supernatural working within me. That's the blessing that God okay. put in my life. So I don't have, I have a decision on what street that I'm going to walk on. Right. I make, I have a choice on what direction I'm going to make, uh, focus on. So you know who your daddy is. I know who my daddy is. You see, Abraham, <laughs> we are the seed of Abraham. So he's the father of our faith. I mean, naturally, no, our father is God. He is he's who our dad father. is. That's where but Abraham got his blessing. That's right. That's how We're that works. We're part of the family. So you've moved from Stress Street to Bless Boulevard. Now, some people would want to uh, persecute you about that because they think only in terms of finances. I knew a man one time, uh, not long ago when I was a kid growing up, he made less money than everybody around him. Mm -hmm. But he loved his job. Everybody around him worked, had these big oil company jobs, you know, and stuff like that. And he worked at a bank. Yet, when you look at what he possessed, it looked like he possessed more than the, than the people that made bigger money than him because he was on Bless Boulevard. <laughs> and they were on Stress Street just trying to make two ends meet, trying to get enough money to get here to get there and do these things. Now, when you understand that God said, I'll bless you in the city, in the field, going in and going out, that's everywhere you go. That's not only financially, which you should have, because the Bible says, I mean, as a proof, whatever you have, if you pass away and you have children, it goes to your children. Right. But if you go read Genesis 13, the Bible says that Abraham was very rich in cattle, silver, and gold. Those are physical things. Yes. That's not spiritual things. But I like what God said about Abraham in Genesis 18. And in verse 17, he said, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Watch this. Verse 18 is where I want to get to. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Now, because I am in Christ, because I'm the seed of Abraham, because I know who my daddy is, I know where my inheritance is, then I would say, Seeing that Jesse so surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Yeah, we're I put my name in there That's because good. God said, wherever I go, he goes with me. Right, right. And the only Jesus some people may ever see is the Jesus in you or the Jesus in me. Now, some of you say that's a cocky statement. No, no, that's not. I am what God says I am, not what people say I am. Yes. See, so I'm a very blessed man, spiritually, physically, and financially, because of the Our Father prayer. His will be done where? Here as it is there. So we should be living the same here. Right. Just like we live in there, other than we know we have to defeat the devil. And he's already defeated. Right. And all we have to do is walk on him. 
So how did you get that statement, uh, I, I moved from Stress Street to Blessed Boulevard? Well, I know that, that I have a, uh, an inheritance because uh -huh. of Jesus Christ, and I'm, I'm connected. Like I said, I know who my daddy is. That's right. <laughs> I know what household I belong to. When we believe in Jesus, we belong to the household of faith, and Abraham is called in the Bible the father of faith because he believed God by faith, and because of him, the, we just read it, how all the families will be blessed through him, and it's because if, through our belief. And I, So you access... Uh, Bless Boulevard by believing. Right. So I, I'm and of receiving. the household of faith. Right. See, so that's the household See, headed what happened by when we father. were dating, you didn't own anything I had. But when you cut a covenant with me, and we stood before a man of God, a priest who married us, then everything I had belonged to you. Yeah, and if the, you my, remember, I had a little bit of money too. Not much, uh, Captain. Oh, no, I no, had. No, I remember you. You could barely buy a we, donut. <laughs> Back in those I remember. Days. Well, you wanted it. I mean, we pulled it together to <laughs> see sure how did. much we had. I did have some money. Yeah. And so I brought some much to money the table. Had, I remember it was like four hundred dollars. <laughs> That's a lot of money. It, back for then. me, it was yes, back then. But we we needed it all together, so we Amen. we pulled it together and we. Yeah. Well, both of us knew that if we wanted to get ahead in life, somewhere. we'd have to. Well, after we say we knew we had to serve God, but we also had to work. But see, let me show you how you move from Stress Street to Bless Street. The Bible said in the book of uh, Blessed Boulevard, <laughs> uh, the Bible said, if you catch the thief, he has to return his seven pole in the substance of his house. Now, here's another statement you said. Yeah. One time we were preaching at, at the Southwest Believers Convention, and um, Brother Copeland was so kind and courteous, he was introducing the wives of all our speakers. And he asked each and every one of them to come up and say something. He asked Carolyn and Savelle to come up. the only time I've known him to do it. Yeah, it was it's really nice. And he asked Kathy to come up, and this is what you said. And it changed the whole fabric of the Believers Convention. You said, my assignment is to bankrupt the devil. That's right. Do you remember that? I remember it distinctly. How do you bankrupt the devil? You take back everything that he's stolen uh -huh. and uh -huh. all the uh -huh. substance <laughs> of his house. So, yes. And you make him pay back seven times. That's in the That's book right. of Proverbs. Right. I remember seeking God because the enemy had attacked our ministry. He was, uh -huh. someone was uh, stealing our mail. They were intercepting United States postal uh, Which trucks. Which is a federal offense. And we didn't know what was going on at the time. We later found that out. But a lot of mail wasn't coming to us. And people would call us and say or contact us and say, hey, my check never cleared. I ordered this book right. and I never got my book. And so, or, or you know, because I think they were pilfering through the mail and they would pick out the cash out of the envelope. So we told people, please don't send cash. But yeah. it was a, a, a several months where we were dealing with this. And I remember oh, yeah. really seeking the Lord and praying and and then I found that scripture. I took ownership of that verse. And I, I, just, I, I just had the thought in my head when I read the verse, I'm going to bankrupt that devil. Amen. How dare he touch what belongs to us and belongs to the ministry. Putting, and so we just began to pray. And I'd say, uh, I remember I would say, go ahead and set your court date because I'm going to take back everything that you <laughs> stole from me. And not only just what you stole, you're going to have to return it seven times and all the substance of your house. Yeah, that means That's where the bankrupt the devil came into you, my mind. He, you can get his furniture. He came sat down in his own house. Yes. Every bit of it. Now, you don't think God got a sense of humor. You know how they caught these guys? It was two guys. That's a federal offense. You don't mess with the mail. Now, I know the figure. We were losing $30,000 a day. My mail, mail wasn't coming in. That's what uh, at that time. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't mean to sound private. We don't have a small ministry. But whatever our partners send, we put it 100% in the world evangelism. We don't stuff it in our pockets and things of that nature. What you see I have is I purchased myself. Right. I mean, I did that me. You yeah, see? and we sold lots, lots of product. Yes, People wanted the ministry materials. Intellectual so property. We wanted to get it out to them. belongs to me mm -hmm. and things of that nature. But watch this. <laughs> of all things on I-20 coming from Dallas to Shreveport, there was a... A mail, uh, U.S. Postal mail truck, kind of like an 18-wheeler kind of size, pulled over on the side of the road. I, I, there was another guy in a mail truck coming down on I-20. So he saw the truck, so he thought he'd pull over and help. Because he thought it was just broke down. Yeah, he thought, thought it was, it was just broke down. Right. They don't know. So why says, so he, th he didn't check. The, he went right past the back of the trailer and went to look into the cab of the truck, and there was nobody there. He was looking around. And, so he went to the back of the trailer, and he noticed, like, you know how them latches does that? It was kind of like this. So he, when he opened it up, there was the guy with our mail in his hands, ripping it open at other people's mail that he had mm -hmm. been stealing. Of course, he went to prison. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's amazing how 
uh, and I don't doubt he probably said, don't turn me in, but he had to. There was no other choice. And, uh, and it was amazing how God returned it, and yet we never lost. God honored us and blessed us. Yes, the But people. what we were concerned about was uh, our partners, you know, wh where's my check? Right. And See, I'm, I, I refuse to be lazy with the seed that you sow into this ministry, whether it be spiritual, physical, or financial. We, it, it must be worked. Seed must be worked in soil, right. you see, and so that it can produce. Now, so we went to our daddy Abraham, in the sense of uh, the father of faith, and our daddy God. Yes. And said, Lord, we need this not only to help us go in the world and preach the gospel to every creature, but to help our partners so they can receive 30, 60, and 100 fold yes. return. I remember praying things, and I would often pray things like this, Lord, whatever's hidden, reveal it. And I was always, we would always pray this. So this guy, this guy probably had done it before and maybe done, went somewhere where he was oh, yeah. more hidden and got bolder about it, and then it got exposed. So one way in which you say to bankrupt the devil is that you catch him and make him return sevenfold. Or seven yes, times. that means I'm standing in my faith to receive everything. Amen. I'm not going to just say I want it back, what, what was taken. I want, to, I want him to return it sevenfold because that's the promise. Right. You see, you've got to understand something about Satan. He don't kill you first. See, a lot of people actually misquote that scripture. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. It's actually reversed. He uh, they say kill first, but no. He said he steal comes to steal. First. Everything that Satan possesses, he's never created. He's never made anything. He has stolen it from us. Right. That's the so seed of Abraham, which is your inheritance. See? So whatever Abraham, as it goes down through the line, since God put us into that heritage, it is ours. Now, now let me take it even further than this. And some of y'all are going to freak out over this. Everything that Jesus has, has been given unto us. Right. All we have to do is just simply believe it. That's what the word means, bless. Bless means empowered to prosper. I don't want to get on this for a minute. There are a lot of people empowered to prosper, but they won't prosper because they won't empower it. That's good. It's true. You see what I'm trying to say? I was just thinking about that because so many people live below oh, the yeah. standard God has given to us because they just think, oh, it's too good to be true, or they can't believe it, or their experience of what others have told them. The right. lie, you know, the devil perpetrated a lie upon the the church and for years, uh, the propaganda is what I call it, that he, he threw out there that, that we're supposed to be poor. And that was a way to shut down the spreading of right. the gospel. But God always intended his children to be blessed. And that meant we should be the head and not the tail, above, above and not beneath. You know, that we yeah. should be blessed going in, blessed coming mm -hmm. out. Everything we set our hand to do should prosper and be blessed. That's the heritage that belongs to us as children of Ab the father right. of the faith is Abraham, if you want to think of it that way, or the children of God. Like, I like that. Say, bless going in, bless going out. Let me, let me make it way it's so simple. When you go into the mall and you go into a store, you bless going in. And you buy whatever you want. You shouldn't be broke when you come out. Right. And it you shouldn't see, all just be you see what I'm saying? on you a should credit have more card than that enough. you can't pay. <laughs> yeah, you bless going in, you bless coming out. In other words, what you're blessed does not change by what you spend or what you save, because you're empowering that word to bless. Let me say it again. Blessed is, means the, uh, empowered to prosper. Yet some people who don't believe in that will not empower that power to do it. Mm -hmm. And they could do so much. Right. And I'm not just talking about money, because let me see, I've said it so many times, now, I've got to say it again on the boardroom chat. You know, people say money bad, but if money is so bad, how come you have a hard time giving it away? Must not be that bad because, boy, I tell you one thing, you're gonna hold on to it. Right. No, no, money's not bad. It's an economic tool that we use in today's society, but it's the love of money that's bad. When you fall in love and make money your security, well, then then you you messing up bad because then you take out your daddy, <laughs> and money becomes your daddy. Right. Money make, meets your needs instead of God meeting your needs. Yeah. Watch this, according to his riches in glory. glory. So God prospered, but he empowered that prosperity. Right. So when I began to see that years ago in the scripture, I said, you know, that's spiritual, physical, and financial. So I began to look at myself in the mirror. You know, I, just, you know, I was just, wasn't saved too long, a few years, you know. And I began to speak healing. No, no, excuse me. I began to speak health to my body. I said, I am not going to get sick. Now, I want to tell you something. I got rawly persecuted over that. But, you know, God said if he took my infirmity, why would I want it? Mm -hmm. If he bore my sickness, why should I have it? 
Yeah, but you know what? Well, you know what follows in the family. Some people diabetes and cancer and heart. Trauma. Well, that may be genetically true, but you're not genetically linked up with your family. Once you're born again, you're genetically linked up with the Lord Jesus Christ, who has the power to change your genetics in your physical body. Right. To mm -hmm. live like your spirit body's living yeah. in health. You know, Jesse, just think how far along the body of Christ would be if we would all just get together on and believe what God said. You know, so often we'll, we'll declare heaven, what God we? says and someone will say, like, you just made that excuse, how, how you have to explain it to them. So we're like we're on this religious treadmill. Always we're all working, but we're not really not getting somewhere because we're constantly yeah. tearing down someone who's trying to speak and declare what God has said. We need to get together on the message and believe God. Amen. And, and refuse to listen to the doubt. Refuse to listen to those who say it can't happen. And let God's word be final authority. You, you, you need to understand that, Linda. God only what we wanted to do is bless you. You know, if it wouldn't have been for sin, he'd have never had a serious thought. He put Adam and Eve in that garden. Everything's met, beautiful, wonderful, gloriously. Yeah. And, and who comes? The thief, mm -hmm. you see. And he wanted the garden, but he couldn't get the garden. He may have got the man and the woman, but he couldn't get that garden, see. Mm -hmm. But what I love about our father God, our daddy, daddy, <laughs> I said, who's your daddy? That'd be Abraham, but who's your daddy, daddy, Abba, father? That's God Almighty. He said, you know what? Let me show how much he loves us, the body, because we all came out of Adam. He said, if he, and I'll paraphrase it, if Adam and Eve can't live in this garden, I'm not going to live in it neither. Mm -hmm. And he went out the garden with them. Yeah. And watched them. Now that's pretty good. You think about that. You know, your mm -hmm. father. And you know, all of us, as you get older, uh, you know, you, you know your kids are smart, <laughs> but you think, I don't know if them kids can make it. Well, you know, what's happening is they're breaking away from the family. That's biblical. They got to do that. They got to go stand on their own. They got to do those things. And it's very, very hard, see? And I don't doubt it was very hard for the Lord. Like, whew, mm -hmm. I can't walk in the cool of the day in my garden because my kids are outside the garden. Right. So I, if they're walking amongst the thorns and, and, and the thistles and all that kind of, I got to walk amongst the thorns and the thistles. Right. You see, things right. of that nature. And oh. that's why he sought out a man. That's right. And he found this man named Abraham. You'll see this in Genesis chapter 12 where we just read this. He was looking for someone who would believe him by faith. And the, uh, the testimony of Abraham was that he was, a, he was looking for a, a city whose builder and maker and was, was God. God. That's so he had his eye and his focus on God. And God revealed himself to him and chose him to uh, restore the blessing into the earth. Uh, let, let, let me interrupt you for a minute. What has God chosen you to do? Think about that for a minute. Every one of us has a job to do. What has God chosen you to do? Hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's all different paths of things of how to get all that done. But you know what? You need to know where you're going so you'll know when you get there. Yeah. I find so many people, they're traveling on what I call the journey of Christianity, but they don't know where they're going. Yeah. person asked me one time, in, in, in a sense, he said, you know, I'm I bless, I, um, I, you know, I, I give, and uh, I'm just not being blessed. Well, you know why? You, <laughs> you're giving in the wrong soil. But it's a church. I don't care if it's a church. <laughs> there are a lot of churches that are infected with doubt, unbelief. There are a lot of churches that don't believe in healing that are affected with sickness. So when they get it, they just think it's natural. Well, it works in the natural. But see, you, the Bible said, is there any sick among you? If there is, call the elders of the church. Anoint them with awe. Watch it. Pray the prayer of doubt. What's the prayer of doubt? Well, if it be his will, let him hear you. That's a doubt prayer. Pray the prayer of faith. And the Bible said he'll raise them up. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, that's what I'm talking about. Um, oh, Lord, I'm going to get some hassle on this. People say, well, you want them prosperity preachers. Well, that's better than me one of them doubt preachers. Good Lord. Now, when you think prosperity, you only think in terms of money. And, uh, and, 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 and money is one part of prosperity. But it's amazing to me what I'm preaching is working. Mm -hmm. See, not because of me, because of what God said. See, G God even said, I cannot withhold Something from Abraham seeing that he's going to become a great and mighty nation. And the earth, the earth, that's us, shall be blessed in him. That's why I call who's your daddy, you see? Be blessed in him. Do you understand what I'm saying there? Then when Jesus came, oh God, man, he, he, he took it so far above Abraham that we could actually come into the 
throne of grace. We can, don't have, you, you got, we can sit down. It's hard for me to comprehend that in my mind. Everyone has to stand at attention, angels, cherubim, servants. But when you come and you come boldly to the throne of grace, he made you sit in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Now that's powerful yeah. because of the human race, <clears throat> well, that, just which he loved. I was just thinking about what you were saying to, to those that are watching along with us and chatting with us. Hope you're writing some comments and chat along because, you know, God has given us assignments. I remember you may have an assignment for your whole family. God gave me an assignment, uh, and I call it a, a divine assignment, right. to bankrupt the devil. But he also gave me assignments before that to believe for my family to be born again. Amen. And, That's prosperity. And every area that God gives us different assignments at different stages in our life and because he knows this is what we need to do to bring to pass his promise in our life. Did you have that in your heart about to get your family saved? I totally did. So what would you say of this? Some people say, well, I just don't think all your family should be saved. You shouldn't have everybody saved. Maybe <laughs> half of them. You shouldn't have that. Or let me just say, well, bless God. You, 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 three sisters can be saved, but the rest got to go to hell. You know, two can drive a car and one can fly a jet, but you know, you can't have too much. No, you never thought of that. You took the prosperity of salvation and made up your mind to get your family right, saved. Right, I didn't even listen to those kind of thoughts. I, I didn't, I want, I had listened to the thoughts that I wanted to hold on to that would give me the answer that I want. You know, all of us hear other people or maybe our thoughts in our mind about failure, but God wants us to know that the secret or the formula to receiving what we want is to put his word in our heart. Jesus said, take no thought saying. Don't say what you don't, That's right. what you don't want. Don't right. say what, yeah. you what you don't want. Yeah. That sounds like I a mean, double say, negative. No, no, say it like it. Say what you want, don't say what you have. Exactly. See what I'm saying? Now watch this. If you go to Genesis chapter one, I want to read it. If Kathy, if you can go over there real quickly, then uh, Genesis chapter one. Watch this now. And God, and, and and you know God starts creating man. I believe in verse uh, verse twenty six. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion. Watch this. Over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Then verse twenty seven says, So God created man in His own image. In the image of God created He him. Male and female created He them. Not him, them. So we look like God, smell like God, talk like God, be like God. Why do we want to be persecuted for that when we just say and taking this what God said? Now watch this. And, and God blessed them. He didn't curse them. Yeah, so that's the first word that the human ear heard was a blessing word. Well, when you have dominion over the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, that is empowering your prosperity, empowering that's what bless means. And can you just think for a moment, like when a when you have a my niece just had a brand new grandbaby. Yeah. The very first words that a parent or mother or grandmother will look at the face of that beautiful baby, they're going to say loving, beautiful, blessing words, and that parallels to me what what the first what Adam and Eve had to have heard when God spoke to them and blessed them. This is the kind of God we serve. A lot of people would want to twist that around yeah. and say we have a, he's a mean father. Oh. No, he wants only the best for you, just the same way you only want the best for your child or your grandchild or your great-grandchild. But what you sow, what you reap, I kind of do it like this so you can't misunderstand it. When someone gets born again, they call a babe in Christ. Right. Well, I'm going to just kind of paraphrase and, and, and do a little illustration here. So when I got born again, <clears throat> I was in Jesus' arms. And when Jody, my biological daughter, got born again, I put her in my arms, and we came to, back to home, your hometown, home of Louisiana, and we showed your mother, and we showed my mom and dad, and everybody said, and we said, um, what, what do you think? And they said, look at Jody. You know, she has a mouth. And they all start talking about how the different Who features. she looks like. like and well, when Jesus saved me, I was in baby form. He walked up to God, the Father, and he said, hey, Father, what you think? What you think? And here I am, just a little bit. And the Father God said, he looks just like you. <laughs> Look, he's got his little mouth is the same. See, my point is this. See, God wanted to bless. Right. When Jody was born, we were by ourselves. You were in Arlington Memorial Hospital. All our family lived in Louisiana. Jody's the only one in, the, in our family that's a Texan. She was born in Arlington, Texas. You know what I did? I went out and bought her a dress. Now, you got to understand how I look like long, dark chocolate brown hair, Jesus sandals, tie-dye T-shirt, you know, bell-bottom 
<laughs> Levi jeans. I went and bought a beautiful dress. And I remember that nurse said, look at this hippie guy. Look how pretty he dressed this. And so she could have something nice to, to be put on to come out of the hospital mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. It was one of the most amazing. I didn't think. Well, bless God, she is born naked. She's coming out naked. I ain't spending Don't that kind it. of money on it. That was so silly. Right. I wanted to bless her because she was my child. Right. See, I was her daddy. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Who's your daddy? See, and God said, I will not withhold any. He's no respect to person. I'll not withhold anything from you, seeing that you're going to become. Mm -hmm. And I take that scripture to us today. A great nation needs to go to one preach the gospel to every right, preacher. Right. Knowing that and that people will be blessed. I've had people say, Brother Jesse, oh, I had that yesterday. My whole family's been blessed because of your ministry. Mm. That they've been following me for years and years. And we prayed for that little baby the other day. We was in Canada the other day. Had a wonderful time in Canada. And I've been following you mm -hmm. all my life. I found out I must be getting old because I've preached for a pastor. I've been preaching over 46 years. And I said, how old are you, Pastor? He said, I'm 43. I thought, God, I've been preaching longer than he's been born. <laughs> he's been knowing me since he's a baby. He watched me and, and, and things of that nature. That's what I'm talking about, see. So in power, God said, I bless you. Now, I want to go back to that Genesis chapter 1. And in verse 29, God says, I'm not just finished blessing you. I'm going to give you something to be blessed with, herb-bearing seed. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's why I tell people to give to this ministry. It's fruitful ground. We're not lazy with your seed. Not trying to get something from it, trying to get something to you. Because we're, uh, well, I'm going to get some persecution on this. I am not God, but I do God's things. I do God's ways. I, I, I follow his contract, I guess you could say. If he says bless, I bless. Right. You see, if he says walk on the water, I walk on the water. I had a person call me one time and said they're about ready to make a major, major financial thing and we're going to have to walk through deep waters. And I said, why would you walk through deep waters? Why don't you walk on top of the water? And that person said, oh, my God, that's a revelation. Yeah, you ain't got to walk through it. You can walk on top of it. It's a lot yeah. easier walking on top of it than walking well, through Well, you know, it. I think we've been conditioned to Amen. expect to be, to have, for it to be difficult. Right. And so we basically set ourselves up for that. Right. Or we, uh, we begin to expect things to uh, be, be um have opposition to what we say, but we need to begin to believe for the best. Jesus didn't have spiritually, didn't physically, and financially. Amen. In other words, let me just say this, and this makes me feel good. When Kathy looks good, it makes me look good. If you got a new dress on, some nice jewelry or whatever, something like that, it makes me look good. And when you look good, I look good. They don't say, look at that wife. She let her husband go out the house with a bed head or <laughs> lettuce in his teeth or something. Let I'm always, when we're at the table, I'm always pointing out something. If she you have food about on your it, face. Well, you know, well, as you, you get older, you find, you find you, stuff you, get you, on your mouth. You do it for me too. Well, in yeah. fact, you're supposed to. I'm, I'm, a good friend will say, will stop you and say, hey, look, you got lipstick on your teeth. You know, we, Ka we do that. You know, and I'm always <laughs> asking Kathy, say, boy, he's hard on Kathy. Kathy can be hard on me. I've been preaching at times and I looked at it and woman's supposed to be spiritual and she'll look at me and go, like I said, if I got something hanging out my nose, I'm going, well, praise the Lord. The only time I <laughs> well, did that praise, praise was when, <laughs> when you were telling a story on me and I was trying to distract you. Yeah, you, I keep telling you, you don't certainly have to, did. You don't have to tell all those stories. <laughs> I know. You don't, you're not as bad as today as you were years ago. You oh, must really? have needed a Thank lot of God. material. You know, constantly exposing everything. So will you empower your power to bless? Empower your power to bless. Will That's you do something. it? How do I do that? When you plant your seed, empower it. I put it in good ground, good soil. I demand and command the 30, 60, the 100 fold. Yeah. I don't care what anybody tells you. They're going to get mad at you or working on something. Here. Right, right. Spiritual, physical, and financial. Okay, let's deal with the seed of salvation. When you speaking to your, let's say your family's not saved. I mean, after you give your testimony, call it what you want to tell them, even if though they don't accept it, when you get back into your own, quote, prayer closet, you demand and you command the promise to come to pass that you have the promise of God down to a thousand generations, which is your family. Mm -hmm. Now, and how you keep the devil so poor that he can't keep up with you, you catch him and make him pay seven times and the substance of his house, and now you're bankrupt him. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? The reason why Satan wants to keep people poor, because a poor man can't help nobody. 
Right. Can't do nothing. He can't even help himself. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And, and he, 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 and he has, just has to rely on whatever he can get. But God didn't create poverty. No, he didn't do that. And it, how do I know that? Because, you know, that's one thing I know about the Lord. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you go to heaven, you will not find one iota of poverty at all. Mm -hmm. When you, he created this planet, and he cre there was not one iota of poverty mm -hmm. in it or on it. Right. Isn't that's that amazing? Good. Yeah. When he broke ground with Adam, I like that. He broke ground, made him out of the dust of the ground. Out he came, my right. God. But he made Eve not out of the dust, out of a rib. And everybody like ribs. <laughs> Praise God. Everybody like the ribs. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see? I haven't met anyone who said, nah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Most people say, ooh, let me taste that rib. Can I have like, another one? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and when you understand what that is saying, that he took this woman not out your bottom of your foot, mister. He took her out of your side so that you would be co-laborers together with your destiny, to complete your destiny, get to your destination, see? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying here today. That's why I want to talk about who's your daddy because, you see, you have forgotten the harvest a lot of times that you should have. Mm -hmm. And you just, well, you know, that's just the way it is. No, 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 no. You know, Jody has said this to me so many times. Daddy, everything you touch prospers. And you know what? I've given the same answer. I don't know how many times. You know why, Jody? Not because God loves me more than he loves you or anybody else. I create my world and then yeah. I walk in it. Yeah. Right. See, I create it with the word of God. Right. And then I walk in it. Right. And the reason why I'm blessed financially, because when I sow seed, I make sure that that ground is fertile. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And you know, you've seen me do it many times. I mean, not, we just came from, back from the Victory Thon, which I'm very excited to say uh, over $10 million has come Praise in. Praise God. I didn't, I didn't get one nickel or dime. In fact, I, I gave we a, a chunk off, of money. Right. I, I didn't get a nickel or dime for that. Don't want that. I did that to be a blessing. Right. So that the gospel would, another avenue for the gospel to be preached to the world. Right. It was a lot of work. It was very hard. And all the broadcasters came together, came paid together. those that were there, paid oh, their own expense wonderful. to be there. Many, most, they all brought offerings. And you know, people said, well, it's an inflation it. year. It certainly didn't affect the victory thon mm -hmm. because, I mean, not only did the broadcasters give more, but the people gave more. Right. Why? Well, it's good ground. See we what know I'm the saying? principle. Yeah. Know. Now, you know, people are always trying to give me accolades. Well, but you this. I said, no, no, you know, I don't take God's glory. Thank you that you enjoyed it, whatever like that. And I do the same thing here. <laughs> now, I got to say that. Why haven't you done it for your ministry? You know, I'm on enough television stations to think that I could do my own victory thon. I could do my own telethon. Oh, I, got, I, I love saying this. It's going to make somebody mad. I, don't have, I didn't have to. I'm a blessed man. Now, when I tell my partners to give, it's like a victory thon every day. My partners just, they send in their, their, their financial seed. They send in their prayer for seed. I tell God, I said, you know, and I say it all the time on broadcast television, I've never had a financial deficit. You know why? I trust you. Mm -hmm. You trust me. And we both trust God. Yeah. And together, we are growing spiritually, physically, and financially. Right. Every area. And, but, and the Victory Channel is, is, a, oh, is a whole, I think it's 39 different broadcasters like us. So all of us 38. come together. 38. 38, yeah. 38, so we all come together with a like purpose to it's, see. Well, it's like family. Mm -hmm. It's really wonderful. And, you know, God is so good and gracious, and he's so wonderful. We also believe in drawing the bloodline. Now, I'm not talking about this terrible hurricane. Uh, right now, at the time that I'm taping this, uh, where I just left the home, uh, the, the eye wall is starting to come on uh, the western part of Florida. I don't know if it's between mm -hmm. Fort Myers or whatever, things of that nature. So and probably in our next uh, uh, board retreat, we'll discuss more about that. But we're, we're praying, and praying and believing. That God, that all our partners, all our friends and everything will Protect, be protected and covered through the blood. Amen. See, we just that simple. The, right. We know what they're going through right oh, now. Oh, yeah, because last year we got hit with Hurricane time, Ida. Right. It was rough. Yeah. Ooh, uh, was it This time rough. last year we were in recovery mode. Oh, yeah. On, actually on generator power. We were doing we our do, program on generator power. That's right. correct. And you know what? The devil said, I'm going to shut him down. He couldn't do it. So he, watch this, in 2020, he sent the COVID to shut down the church and shut down the government. He couldn't do it. Yeah. You realize how many failures Satan has failed? Mm -hmm. He's a complete failure. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the Bible said he's under your feet, and you have the power of attorney to use that name of Jesus. Yes. 
So who's your daddy? Use your daddy's name, praise God. That's right. And rebuke that devil. And yes. I don't care if it's public. Right. In public places. Sure. Just rebuke that devil. I mean, I, one thing I hate probably more than just about anything is prejudice. And I will not allow that junk around me, even if I'm in a public place. I see someone being prejudiced. say, excuse me, why would you, well, you know what you're saying here? You know, I mean, you're judging someone because of the color of their skin or whatever. Or you're judging them because you think they're too fat or they're too skinny or too ugly or too pretty. I don't know, whatever you want. And who do you think you are? You don't do that. Look at your own self. If you want to look at somebody, and you, see, you shut them down. I will not allow that. You know, and God's word is so good and gracious because, you see, God gave me this word, bless, going in. Bless going out. Mm -hmm. well, Brother Jesse, you think you'll ever lose it all? Well, how can I lose it all if I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out? So when I'm going in with a blessing, I'm coming out with a blessing. God is constantly filling it. And Genesis 1 tells you, be fruitful, always multiplying. No, be fruitful, always producing. Multiply, always increasing. Replenish. In other words, use it going in. Yes. Replenish it coming out. And then he said, subdue. If anything gets out of line, put it down. Put yeah. it down. And that's what we do. That's what you do, really. You're insisting on your rights. Oh, yes. You're standing I, I right. up for your rights. And no, I'm supposed to be blessed. If, if your situation looks different than what you're believing for, stand up for your rights because you're supposed to be blessed. Well, you know, during that hurricane last year, let me just tell you something. Hurricane Ida, which would have been 2021, we got in the eyewall. I had 168 mile an hour gust in my backyard, 140 mile an hour sustained wind. I mean, it was rough. It sounded like a, I mean, it was so loud. And I have hurricane glass on my house, uh, hurricane window. And watch that. The, see how I mean? The, the windows were buckling. I had my good friend Richie Pichon had to take a two by four, the way his house was facing, how he built it, and put screws this long zzz, so it wouldn't yeah. break the door. The Bra door was To cut. brace the door. This so it wouldn't rough. blow in and destroy its home. Were you afraid? Now, I don't mean it's an arrogant. It's a no. Now, I had people say, well, what do you do? If, if, well, we, if something tear up, I'll fix it. Mm -hmm. That's not the issue. But I wasn't believing for that. And more people had more destruction around me than I did. Now, I had some shingles fly off the wall and all that kind of stuff right. and things of that nature. And Kathy heard something. I'll never forget that. Man, I mean, I don't see how she could hear with all that noise. And I have a very soundproof house. We heard, pow! And, and she said, what was that, Jesse? We didn't know We didn't know until after the hurricane was over. Something hit one of the windows that going into our bedroom. And because it's double glass hurricane, and I think it was up to 180 mile an hour tested, it broke the first piece. One, one of the One pain, but the, the other one's the held. The exterior see? part was you broke. You know, so I figured if it's 180 miles an hour, you got like 90 mile an hour wind on both a, one of them panes at each. So right. said, I think you know, it was a piece together. of a metal gutter. Gutter that, or, that or, or maybe I literally saw people's roofs flying, trees mm -hmm. going, all kinds of stuff. Why did you stay? Because the Lord told me to. What? He told me to. You know why he told me to? Because the next day, after that thing was, I'm in the streets praying for people. Hmm. I'm in the streets helping people. I had to come here. When I got here, man, the ceiling top was <laughs> You know, hanging down water. We had a piece of our production distribution center right. ripped off. I, did you get, well, I didn't like it, right. but it's all fixed today. There was a season of recovery. You know, even though you're attacked, you can't give sure. up. You don't God give up. will restore everything. Like, you have to insist that we're going to restore. We're going to get everything the enemy has stolen seven, in seven times. times and all the substance of his house. I, we got re uh, insurance paid for everything. Everything. You know, and I've heard people say they're still struggling even now. It's over a year yeah. to get insurance. They never even thought twice about it. The thing that I thought was a miracle, the church is the biggest building if you add the wings and the TV studio. They got up there and the, th the wind was so strong, it hit, this is a metal roof building. The screws were up this high. They said, what are we going to do? I said, screw them back down. <laughs> yeah, the, he the, tried the, to take the, the roof off. The plan of the enemy was to pull it off. Oh, he was doing everything, everything he knew to but do. But we didn't even stop church. We had church the next Sunday right after the hurricane, I think, came through on a Sunday. Yeah. And we didn't have service that day because people were home. But you don't think it was so bad. I, in the executive office, I have a fireplace in my, in my, my office. Now, you know how a fireplace on the outside, you got the brick thing that goes all the way up. It was so powerful, the suction. You know that metal thing inside the fireplace, with the, uh, the ducking, I call it, I don't know if that's it's the right the flume, word. I think it comes up, the, comes up the brick thing. 
it pulled it completely out. Sucked it out. Knocked the, the brick off, the pulled top, it completely, sucked it out. Mm -hmm. I thought, my God. Now, if you Strong. know, the, I believe the angels, kind of, because it, it's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. Water should have been pouring through that thing. I didn't have one drop of water mm -mm. in my offices at all. Now, you can say what you want. I've seen too many miracles happening, how God protected us. And we got it. And you know, everybody's oh. screaming to get uh, contractors. I had three different contractors within five hours after the, the thing passed. What we can do for you? I said, what are y'all doing? He, he said, man, you helped us. We want to help you. And, man, we just started. And God was so good and gracious. And then, you know what? My, a lot of my staff, what they, it, 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 some that didn't have maybe damage, they went over to someone that did have damage, and they got there, and they started working with them, and everybody just went to work. Yeah. And, you know, it kind of reminded me of when I was a kid. They used to, you said, they don't have to, you don't have to leave. You don't have to evacuate. But now what they do, the, the police and everything kind of keep you out uh, if it's a bad hurricane because people loot. I don't know why they would loot in this terrible time. But in those days, when I was a child, we'd have a hurricane like Hurricane Betsy and uh, Hurricane Camille and all this stuff. Man, you was back the next day cleaning your yard, and, you, and if you had a leak, you know, if you, you don't come back for a week or two, I mean, that mold just grows straight up that wall. You could smell Clorox 100 miles away when we'd have hurricanes when I was a kid. They cleaned it all out. And to tell you the truth, uh, the, um, you know, the insurance company didn't have to spend as much money because they had a lot of people back in. They had to be careful. They don't step on live you know, electrical lines and things of that nature. But you know what we did, and we still do, right now all, to all our partners and friends in Florida, we draw the bloodline. Mm -hmm. We just draw the bloodline. And God's word just comes to pass. That's what I'm talking. Bless going in. Bless going out. Right. Doesn't make no difference, you see, when you know who your daddy is. Mm -hmm. And you've got the inheritance of Abraham. Right. And you got the inheritance of El Shaddai God Almighty. Right, right. So if you need help today and you're giving and you're not seeing it, then you better look at where you sow it. I, I, I don't mean that to sound harsh, but I, if you take corn and go you know, and sow it in Antarctica, it's not going to grow because that environment will not let it grow. It's too cold. It, it, it's not, you know, it'll destroy it. But you have to put it in good soil. So thank you, partners, for letting us do all we do. Mm -hmm. Your faithful financial support is so wonderful and gracious. If you'd like to become a partner, you, there, there's ways to do it. You can go to jdm.org. That's our website. You can use PayPal or you can text to give or you can mail in a donation. And you've heard me say it so many times. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Please, but please keep watching the program. Right. We don't, we don't force people to do anything. We are going to be blessed, but I won't tell you something. This anointing of increase that's on me and God, it will come on you. Why? Because we'll push it towards you. Right. We'll, and I'll tell you something. I got faith better than a cat, than a cat five hurricane. Now, I'm not bragging on that. I just know how to do it through the word of God. Shield of faith, boy. Mm -hmm. And see, and it's just such a blessing. I right. believe you've got a few uh, testimonies. Yeah, I don't, I don't want us to stop today no. without saying it through. The Pauline says, greetings from Kenya. Bridget says, greetings from Ghana. And, and this person, Open Doors Faith House of Prayer is the handle on this one. It says, watching from Chicago. Uh -huh. We love you, Brother Jesse. Brother and Sister Duplantis, keep keeping it real. Praise You'll God. never complicate the simplicity of the gospel. Praise the Hezekiah Lord. Hezekiah says, watching from Wanda, Africa. I am enjoying the chat. Hezekiah? Yeah. And Ooh, Nicola says. There's a man says, in the Bible named Hezekiah. Mm -hmm. Nicola says, watching, excuse us, joining from Oxford, United Kingdom. I will need to re-watch continuing prayers for you and praise to our Papa for his goodness to us for the gift of his spirit. I'm well, she learning, knows who her daddy is. <laughs> yes, I, so. I am learning so much from the two of you. Badia says, hello, team. Greetings from Auckland, New Zealand. Auckland. Carl says, hi, from Great Britain. Nabakulu Kalu says, hello from Uganda, Africa. I love your teachings. They encourage me in the Lord. Thank you. Daniel says, I so enjoy watching you, Brother Jesse and Sister Kathy Duplantis. Thank you for your obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. You have been such a blessing of the Lord. I love you. You know, it's amazing. When you, I've never been to Uganda, but yes, I have. Because she sent a testament. She's watching us. That's because of our, our partners, Kathy, that uh -huh. help us do these things. So, and uh, well, I mean, I've never physically to been to Uganda, right. but my God, I've been there now. Social media is getting there and different Ooh, things. Oh, what a blessing. Also, uh, Lance says, thank you for your faith, 
for faithfully teaching God's word so that I might live out my faith and be a true witness for Jesus Christ and his purpose for my life. Oh, glory Isn't that great? To God. I'll I love tell you, this one from Susie. It says, thank you, Jesse and Kathy. My son was walking with the devil, <laughs> and now he is walking with Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Every time I see him, he has the biggest smile on his face because of you. Thank Another you. Blood. Doesn't that bless well, you? That, that honors me. It honors the Lord, see. And I, like I say, I will. Uh, I, I don't mean this in an arrogant. I live clean. I live holy before the Lord Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean I hadn't made mistakes. I mean, but not them kind of mistakes. I mean, I just don't do those things. I just enjoy being saved. I enjoy pleasing God. I did a little scripture that I love. It's in the Old Testament. He said, if you honor me, I will honor you. You know, Kathy, God has honored me. I, I told Kathy the other day we was coming. We had just landed in Canada. I had two great services. They had two, one, two different churches. Blessing of the Lord. I have a beautiful aircraft that God has given us. Well, <laughs> we had to wait for custom to clear, so I... Uh, they, were, they were tying down the aircraft, and then we were sitting in the van, and I looked at that, and I thought, my God, I remember when I was a child, I wanted a bicycle, but I never, I, I never could get one. I never got a new bicycle in my life. So my dad found one in a junkyard, and it was kind of raggedy and everything, but you know what? I'm glad I got it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I drove it a little bit. I drove it. I mean, rode it a little bit. Mm -hmm. and thinking, But then I looked back, and I thought, God, look what you have that you've given me to travel now to go do your work. And he said, because I trust you and your partners trust you. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll not break that trust, Lord. I will not do that. I just, I, just, I just can't do that because you work too hard for what you get and you want to be a part of this ministry and I thank you. So I, I wanted to stop today. We're just about to finish here. To always remember who your daddy is. Mm -hmm. And if you're struggling, empower your blessed, empower your power to bless. Let it happen, and you're going to have people try to stop you. But let God do what he wants, spiritually, physically, and financially. Now, when God begins to bless you with spiritual, physical, and financial things, don't fall in love with that kind of thing. You keep your love and your focus on Jesus, and you use the things that he blesses you with. Right, right. It's just that simple. Right. I'll say one more thing uh, concerning me as far as something physical. People ask me all the time, what do you drive? You and most people don't believe when I say, I drive a truck that's 10 years old. It is 10 years. It's a 2012. Kathy said, you love that truck. And she's been trying to get me a new truck for a long time. I said, no, I like this. And I mean, but it looks like the day it come off the showroom floor. There's not a scratch on it. I mean, and, the, and it's a beautiful, I just like it. It's a little, it's a two-seater pickup truck. I didn't want a, you know, a cab, bigger. I just wanted something for me. And Kathy said, but I'll get you something. I said, I know that. But I, I, I'm pleased. See, it, you don't have to have nothing wrong with a Rolls Royce. I believe in them. I believe in them. I've drove, I've drove them. I've, I've rode in them. I don't own one, but I've drove, and I'm glad you got them. But I enjoy my truck just as much as that Rolls Royce. But I don't get mad because I've got one. I'm glad. And if you want one, I'll believe God with you to get you one. That's not the issue. But my point is this. Uh, uh, I, I just enjoy that when I get up every morning, I know that the Lord was there when I was sleeping, and he's there when I get up. He never leaves us or forsakes us. So thank you for watching today, each and every one of you. And Kathy, thank you that you have moved from Stress Street to Bless Boulevard. <laughs> I, thought, I, I remembered you saying that, and that how she has bankrupt the devil yeah. in our lives. Another phrase I often would say, I'm anointed to win an impossible to curse. Hallelujah. Because I live on blessed Boulevard. Bless Boulevard. <laughs> Hallelujah. How, is it 7777 seven, seven, Bless Boulevard? That's God's number? I guess it 77, is. 77 Bless <laughs> Boulevard. What a blessing. I don't know. Until next time, this is Jesse and Kathy saying we love each and every one of you. Keep the faith, and we'll see you next time right here on our boardroom chat. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.